In the vicinity of O'Hare International Airport, the quaint streets and small-town ambiance of unincorporated Norwood Park Township have retained their charm since December 1978. However, the scene no longer hosts throngs of onlookers, worried families of missing young men, and curious visitors crowding the streets before that fateful Christmas, hoping to glimpse the notorious murder house. John Wayne Gacy's admission to raping and murdering over 30 individuals didn't just reveal a chilling nightmare lurking in America's backyard. The discovery four decades ago of the grim, muddy grave beneath Gacy's yellow brick ranch house at 8213 W. Summerdale Ave forever shattered the illusion of a secure suburban community. A quest for missing Maine West sophomore Robert Peast led authorities to 36-year-old Gacy, a robust, thick-necked contractor portrayed by neighbors and colleagues as a respected figure, an amiable, boastful, divorced entrepreneur and democratic precinct leader who hosted themed block parties and entertained kids as a clown named Pogo. The public would prefer if Gacy fit the mold of a creepy recluse, disheveled and vile, remarked Detective Society Jason Moran from the Cook County Sheriff's Office, a key figure in the Gacy investigation. Instead, he donned clown attire and interacted with children. He'd knock on your door advocating for his political candidate. Gacy's nice guy persona masked something far more sinister. Once they were safely restrained, usually in a pair of handcuffs as he demonstrated a trick he learned as a clown, Gacy's easy smile melted away, revealing a cold, growling predator who sexually assaulted his victims before strangling many of them with a knotted rope. He buried 29 of his 33 victims in trenches underneath and around his home and dumped four others from bridges once his property could hold no more bodies. The horror in the tiny community and images of Gacy and his clown outfit were splashed across newspapers around the world, again associating Chicago with a killing spree 12 years after Richard Speck's massacre of eight student nurses on the far south side. Gacy also had chilling similarities to another charming Chicago area killer, Herman Webster Mudgett, also known as Dr. H. H. Holmes. Quite possibly the country's first serial killer, he lured people into his personally designed murder castle. In the 1890s, Inglewood Mudgett had rooms designed with deceptive features such as vents leading to disposal areas, while Gacy utilized a disorderly rope and a crawl space in his methods. Following the demolition of Gacy's house in April 1979, the empty lot gained notoriety as a popular gathering spot during the 1980s. It attracted a diverse crowd, including ghost hunters and rowdy local teenagers who would often spin their wheels in the dirt lot and leave behind beer bottles in the late hours of the night. According to a neighbor living across the street from the former Gacy property, although a new home now occupies the lot, the neighborhood still attracts occasional tourists or documentary crews. The neighbor, who preferred not to be named, mentioned, if you see two individuals in a car or notice an out-of-state license plate, chances are they're interested in Gacy. Gacy was executed by lethal injection in 1994, but the impact of his crimes went beyond tainting his neighborhood. In response to widespread criticism of local police for taking years to connect the missing victims to Gacy, federal and local law enforcement agencies began sharing information on runaways and sex offenders, implemented a national hotline, and launched a computer database for missing people. Police departments and schools nationwide joined forces for massive public service campaigns, teaching parents and children about stranger danger. Experts said the case also breathed new life into old, unevolved fears about homosexuality, still a taboo subject at the time. The combination of homosexuality and the heinous nature of the murders of young men lent a tawdry element to the tale that also attached shame to the victims and their families, as the unfortunately named Gacy, became a punchline in living rooms and on playgrounds across the country. Please post your thoughts and comments below. Let me know who you would like to know about next in the comments below. Like, subscribe and share. Thank you from the Midnight Society.